Let's program a slime. The plan is to take this little fella and plonk him in the game. So right now, this is the movement, very simple. Literally just, you know, it's just a constant movement towards the player. But what we actually want is, you know, the typical slime behavior of it just doing little bounces every now and then. So what I'm actually gonna do is override this with maybe like a movement kind, and we'll just switch on it. Default will be the normal walk that we have, but we're gonna work on the little bounce today. So let's get that enum in, movement kind. And in the setup, we're just gonna, you know, set that movement kind to what we want it to be. So the little fella is just gonna sit there now. So the question of the day is, how are we gonna program in bouncing this? It's a good question. I think all we really need is a timer. So we'll just have like a jump timer. We'll just take that down. And this is how I deal with timers. The key thing being, you know, every time it's up, it'll just return true and we'll enter into here. So we'll just make the timer fire off every one second or so. And we'll just, you know, do our thing, really. So we'll just give us some velocity every time that fires. It should just jump up and down now. Look at that, look at him go. And then we'll give us some horizontal velocity by basically taking the sign of the distance to target, times that by, you know, whatever we want, like 200 or something. And now it should just like jump towards the player. Look at that. Uh, now the way I'm doing friction on the physics is really broken, so we're gonna need to fix that. <laughs> oh God, we're working on the scuffed physics. <laughs> this is what's about to happen. Oh God, I hate looking at this. Mm. I tell you what we're gonna do. <laughs> Old scuffed physics and the new good physics. So we'll just file all of that away under old scuffed physics. So for the slimy boys, I'm going to make their physics kind the new good physics. So if you want to know how I do the physics from scratch, then uh, here you go. So right now, absolutely nothing is happening. So the whole goal of this is to get the next position, right? We're in one frame, we're going to the next frame, and we're trying to make it move into the next position, also known as integration. So it's really quite simple what I do. I got this from an episode of Handmade Hero. I don't exactly know what type of integration this is. I just know that it works. So the basics are, we have a position in the world. We have a velocity, right? And we have an acceleration, straightforward. To advance the velocity onto the next frame, plus equals the acceleration times it by the delta time. So the acceleration goes into the velocity. So then the next position we want is gonna be equal to our previous position plus the velocity times the delta t scaled. Simple as that. Help if I could spell acceleration, you know, and then that's our next position. We just stuff it in the pause right at the end. <laughs> to fix that, you know, we just put a little bit of gravity in, 980 into the acceleration. Just gotta zero out the acceleration afterwards. Acceleration. So now we got the jump working, right? We have gravity, but we don't have any friction. He's just slipping and sliding around everywhere. So the simplest version of friction I've learned is just at the start of the frame, on the X, we just add in some, like a counterweight based on the velocity. And then, and then we've just got this little constant here that we can tweak however we want to get more or less friction. Now let's increase this jump timer to something like three seconds so we can better tune this. So you can see the, the friction's kind of working there, which is nice, but the friction is dragging it down in the air still. So if we were to like crank this up to like 10 or something, you'll see, you know, it does not look right because the friction's being applied in the air. So I think what we can do is just, just branch that with like a check for, like a check for the pause. So if the pause is, maybe if the pause is equal to zero, yeah, look at that mad friction only on the ground though and that's actually working because right at the end of you know integrating into the next position right we have our next position what i do is i just clamp it down into the ground so so then on the next frame we check oh is this actually exactly zero if so we're on the ground yeah and i think that should be good enough now if we actually wanted like a little bit of air friction we could just you know copy this across and then just change the constant so that's a little bit less intense so now our slimy boy's looking, looking pretty slimy, mate. So yeah, that is uh, friction. Physics, yay! So now that we've got the typical slime behavior and it's just working, which is excellent. Time to do a little bit of damage. So we have our target entity that we're after, which 
at the moment is really just the player. I think all I'm going to do is just a little overlap check. So we'll just get the collision wrecked of our boy and get the collision wrecked of the target and plonk those two into a range overlaps function, which I think, yeah, it's just like basically a collide. And a range is literally just like a minute of max. Good for defining the bounds or rectangles. If it overlaps, we'll just do a little attempt damage. Uh, and that should just work. What do we got? Yeah, look at that. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> I really like dividing things up into like small little chunks like this. So we've got the damage happening here and we've got the movement. That way, if for whatever reason I needed to override the damage, I could do the same thing that I did here with the movement. Or if I just wanted to disable it completely, you could put a flag to get rid of it. Like, I think this reads really well compared to earlier when I had both of them kind of like mixed together in a weird branch. All right, so we're gonna commit that up. Lil Slime Boy. All right, next up, I wanna do a little bit of an animation on this do some squishing. Now, I don't exactly know how to do this, but I'm just gonna type it out and see what happens. So we go, if the Y velocity is not equal to zero, uh, we'll have like a we'll have like a little squish factor, which I'll just grab the absolute Y velocity uh, divided by like 200 or something. Um, so that'll give us like a zero to one squish. A zero to one squishage. I have no idea how that's gonna look, but let's just try it out. Yeah, I mean like, it kind of bounces up in the air. Like it's not exactly the movement I'm after, but the problem is I have no idea what is the movement I'm after. <laughs> See what my boy ChatGPT has to say about things. So when your enemies jump, briefly compress them as they leave the ground and stretch them out as they reach the peak of the jump. Okay, so we're, so we're going up and down, not left and right. So that's my first mistake. No, no, this ain't working, bro. All right, I'm throwing in the towel. Time for a Unity tutorial. <laughs> that didn't help at all. <laughs> We're just gonna skip to me figuring it out. That's looking pretty good. At least that's the jumping portion of things, right? It squishes, then it stretches, and then we're back to normal. So the next thing I want to do is have a animation once it hits the ground. And that, I don't think we're going to be able to derive from velocity. We're going to have to do an actual animation and keep track of some state. So let's caveman it. Ho oh, ho ho, yes. That's looking pretty good. And now for the finishing touches. On the land, we're going to create in the middle. Um, and I think for now... I'm just going to make it hit the same path as the landing dust, because I think the landing dust will just work. Look at that. Isn't it cute? <sighs> Alright, I think it's bedtime. See you tomorrow. Visual Studio is taking up 18 gigabytes, hey? Nice.